Hypoglycemia can result in loss of consciousness, seizures, coma, and even death. Treatment for hypoglycemia, if the patient is awake, would be 15 to 20 grams of carbohydrates. This would be half a cup of orange juice, which is about 120 mLs, or eight ounces of low-fat milk. Candy bars, cookie, and ice cream should be avoided because fat slows down the absorption of sugar. If the patient is not awake and they are an inpatient, we can give an IV administration of 50% dextrose. This is also referred to as an AMP of D50. Outpatient treatment for hypoglycemia might be glucagon IM or sub-Q if the patient carries that medication on themselves. Treatment for hypoglycemia is important and it needs to be quick. And we need to remember to recheck the blood sugar in 15 minutes following our intervention. Once the patient is awake, alert, and oriented, this can be a good time for patient teaching. It's important to explore the reasons that hypoglycemia may have occurred. Next, we're gonna talk about conversation maps. This is a new theory in the teaching of diabetic patients. It's a series of images and metaphors that's on a five feet by three feet tabletop display. And the conversations around a healthcare topic such as diabetes, heart health, or obesity. This is an example of what the tabletop board looks like. So a facilitator places the map on a tabletop and patients sit around the table and discuss facts and myths and uncover information on key topics related to diabetes. Here's another example of what the tabletop looks like. It's almost like a board game. Patients can engage in this kind of learning without feeling threatened or stressed or nervous about their interaction. The other positive aspect of this is that patients can com communicate with each other as, long as, uh, as well as with the facilitator um, to learn more about the disease. Other topics related to diabetes mellitus that we will not discuss in detail here, but that you may want to research on your own, include gestational diabetes. This is diabetes that occurs during pregnancy, and it is usually detected at 24 to 28 weeks gestation. Secondary diabetes is caused by another medical condition. For example, Cushing's disease, which we will discuss later, or hyperthyroidism, can also cause high blood sugars and diabetes. Parenteral nutrition is something else that can cause increased blood sugar. However, in the case of parenteral nutrition, we need to consider how much glucose is in the parenteral nutrition bag. And so perhaps if we lowered the amount of glucose in the bag or increased the amount of insulin in the bag, the patient's glucose would be back to normal levels. Another related topic is prediabetes. This is impaired glucose tolerance. Alteration of beta cell function is mild at this point, and it's the early stages of the disease process. Most patients with prediabetes will try to treat the problem with diet and exercise first, continue to monitor the blood sugars, and use oral hypoglycemics once a diagnosis of diabetes has been made. 